Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to this follow-up case. We've seen this patient before on the channel and I think the last video was called Black Mold in Ear, potentially. I'll link it down in the description box below. But this is an update to the case. As you can see, the ear is still infected. This is otomycosis, so oto meaning ear and myco typically meaning anything to do with the kingdom of fungi. So this is a fungal ear infection. And we can tell that because, well, the debris looks very wet and sluffy and just kind of looks fungal to me. But also there's little black dots, well, lots, intertwined within this debris. And those are the black spores of Aspergillus niger, which is a very common type of fungus. You will have definitely seen it before or had it in your hands because uh, it's the black mold that typically grows on bread and onions, that kind of thing. And just pulling out this huge you know, bit of fungal debris. And right here, it's all of those, you know, it's black as coal really, isn't it? So those are the spores of the fungus. And if we go back in here, we can see a very, very thick bed of, uh, of spores. And bear in mind that the spores are, are just really the reproductive part of the fungus the fruiting part of the fungus, just like a mushroom is. But then you, underneath that, you know, grow it, that's what, you have the mycelium. So the mycelium is kind of the, the feeding vegetative part of the fungus. So if you see a mushroom growing on a log, or you see the spores of Aspergillus niger, or mold on bread, um, don't be fooled by that because underneath that, supporting that is a very, very dense living web of fungal cells feeding. So it, if you imagine a mushroom on a log, underneath that mushroom there will be a network of very fine, they look like sort of hairs. And um, those hairs will be secreting uh, digestive enzymes. So they're basically digesting and eating the log. Uh, or in the case of Aspergillus niger, you know, they're, they're trying, the, you know, the fungus is basically trying to, to feed off of the dead skin in the ear canal. And obviously in the process of, process of that, it will be damaging the tissue, the living tissue. Um, and that's why, as a side point, it's, you know, if you have a, a, a moldy piece of bread, that's why it's very dangerous to just tear off the piece of mold and then continue to eat the bread. It's, it's not good because there will be fungus intertwined within that bread. So we're just trying to clear up here. And again, there's, you know, black spores everywhere, but we've removed most of it. There's a little bit of dead skin on the eardrum, which I'm a little bit, as you can see, I'm kind of hesitating to suck it all up. Um, not that the, the patient is relatively tolerant of the procedure, but he is getting a bit jittery here. So I'm just trying to see if I can remove any more of this debris. And again, the purpose here with this fungal infection, just like with a bacterial infection, we're trying to get rid of as much muck as possible so that the medicine has the best chance of going in and interacting with the, infection, uh, uh, with the pathogen and killing it. So... Again, just going in here with a fine end. Now, in terms of why this fungal ear infection is chronic, and remember the, the time, if you go and watch the previous video, the black mold video, his ear has pretty much been infected since then up until now. And I have seen him a few times in between these two videos to suction his ear out again. As to why the infection keeps coming back, there are possibly a few reasons behind that. First and foremost, he's a he's on a smorgasbord of heart medicines. He is a heart patient. And he couldn't really tell me specifically what the problem was or the medicines that he was taking, but I rather suspect that one of these medicines he's on is suppressing his immune system. And I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe he's on ACE inhibitors, possibly. You know, there's some evidence to suggest that ACE inhibitors um, affects the efficacy of your neutrophils and macrophages, which are white blood cells. That might be something. The other possibility is that he doesn't really manage this very well. So he made, makes no attempt really to, to keep his ear dry. Um, he doesn't douche his ear with acetic acid, which I've told him might be a good idea. Um, he, you know, I've told him several times to go to the doctor about this and he just kind of delays it. So the fungus is having every opportunity really to proliferate and grow. So anyway, we're just kind of going in here again. Now this video is sort of in two parts. So this is the end of the first 
procedure procedure now what's what i'm going to show here is a 10 day gap so at the end of this procedure i was feeling pretty good i was thinking fantastic right we've we've cleaned his ear again and i wrote to the doctor and said you know antifungal drops please and all is good right all right so he's back again 10 days later and as you can see the ear is a complete mess now even I was a little bit surprised by this because I mean the, just the, the sheer rate of growth of this fungus is it's just so quick now you're probably wondering well hang on didn't he get medicine and yes he did he was prescribed clot uh, clotrimazole drops and so which you, you may know as caniston so clotrimazole is part of a uh, Kind of the azole group of medicine so the if you ever see like azole like myconazole or fluconazole um, then these antifungal medicines and they're characterized typically the structure of an azole medicine is that it'll have like a ring of carbon atoms but with a nitrogen in it and one other atom so again i wanted to show this kind of second part because even within 10 days and even with the clotrimazole drops the fungus was just able to, you know, say meh and overcome it quite quickly. Now, in fairness, from the time I saw him to the time he actually picked up the medicine, it was four days. So that might explain it. There was four days where the fungus was just kind of happy to run rampant again. But I think it's very, very interesting to see just how aggressive and how well adapted this fungus is to take advantage of what is clearly a very nice environment for it. It's warm and moist and dark, you know, all of the conditions that a fungus would like. And clearly there's enough food for it. There's enough dead skin in the ear. So again, I'm just doing the same job, really, just trying to clean. And I suppose the eardrum looks maybe a little bit nicer than the first time round. So going in here with a fine end, pressure is about maybe minus 500 millimeters of mercury, something like that. And I'm just going in here and tidying up. So at this point, I wasn't entirely sure what to do. I sent him back to his doctor just to kind of reassess more antifungal drops. And I've said to him that probably after he's finished the course of medicine, probably, you know, daily douching with acetic acid is probably on the cards. Now I know that that's a good idea because an ENT consultant I work very closely with has advocated for that treatment. So I think that that's a good idea, but I, I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the outcome for this chap is. If anybody knows of any heart medicines that will that suppress the immune system, please leave me a comment below because I would definitely be interested. Am I right? Are, are, do ACE inhibitors really affect the immune system that much? Possibly. Any doctors, nurses, scientists, ENTs, physicians out there, let me know. So there we go. Eardrum isn't looking pretty per se, but it's a heck of a lot better than what it was. And um, if I get a further update on this chap, uh, I will certainly let you know. Just tidying up a little bit of dead skin here, but the procedure is pretty much complete at this point. So there we go. I hope you found that interesting. Um, any questions or answers to my questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to respond and get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.